If you want to make a video game but have no experience, today I'm going to show you how using Playdate Pulp. Let's get started. To begin our journey, you're going to want to go over here, click on the plus button, and now you're going to want to name your game. Once the game is named, it will create a game for you, and you can go ahead and give it an author, which in this case is me, and a short description of the game. I'm just going to put Playdate game here because I don't know what we're going to make yet, but I know it's going to be awesome. Now we're going to move on over to the font tab where you can see all of your letters here. Click on the one that you want to use. You'll see it in the right. And as I am clicking, I can take away boxes and I can replace boxes to make the perfect lettering. This is a short A. I think that it would be really funny to make something like that. So as I'm finishing up here, you can see that it appeared in the box. And just to test it, we can go over here and make our custom message. And as you can see, a bunch of A's has appeared. So that's how you know it works. And we can do this with every letter if you were actually going to make a custom font. Now this option up here is for a smaller version of the letters, if you want that as well. Now we move over here to the room tab. Once we're here, we can see how our game is going to look, the layout of it. Up here in the corner is the name of our game. Here is for the music, so if we had a song, we can select it from this menu. This is the add a room button, and this is the duplicate a room button. Up here we have our drop down menu to choose what room we want to be on. We have a grid so you can more precisely place your tiles down. And basically a room is like a level. So anytime you want to change a level, you can do that there. These are the tiles. We have the white tile, which is the floor tile, and the black tile, which is the wall tile. But this room looks a little crowded for him. So I'm going to go ahead and click to make some more room or click and drag. Either option works, and we are just going to make this room exactly how we want it. We are going to lay out some space and just fill it out like we want it, going up and around, adding some walls, taking away some walls. Now that we have our level designed, it looks fine, but it does look a little plain. So let's change that with a custom tile. Let's go over to where it says tiles and click the plus button. This will equip us with a pen and want us to start drawing right away. But first, we should be proper and name our tile just so we can keep better track. I'm gonna name it wood. Now I'm gonna start drawing my wood pattern out here by clicking and dragging. My mouse, as you can see, we're just gonna go across here, maybe down a little bit. Now we're gonna go back again and we're going to go up and down just to give it some randomness in this wood tile pattern. Okay, I think that just about does it. Now that I have it done, I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to click on the area where I want to lay down this tile pattern. So along up here is good. And right now, this wood pattern that we just made acts like a floor pattern. So that means our character can walk right on top of it. It's wood, so we don't want that to happen. So we can click this little box over here that looks like a brick, and our character should not be able to travel through it anymore. Let's move on to our items down here. So these are the items. They are the collectibles. As you can see, it is in the format of a tile, so we can place them down. For the default, they have floppy disks here, as you can see, but I wanna make something more interesting than that because this is my game after all. So we are just going to do what we did for the, basically for a tile and we are going to let's let's make it a hat. So right now I kind of don't know which way I want my hat to go if I want it to go up or down. So I just got rid of it and I'm going to start drawing out my very own hat. 
And as you can see while I'm doing this, on the main room area, you can see that the floppy disk is now turning into whatever I am drawing. So I drew like a cowboy hat, sort of a bucket hat. And we're going to name this for easy access later on. It's always a good idea to name your thing so they don't get lost. Down here is the description or what it says when you collect it. So we're going to get rid of you found a floppy disk. And we're going to put you found a cool hat because I think these hats are pretty dope. So now that we have that message, that's what's going to come up when our character walks by it. I'm going to place a few here, one over here. And maybe two down here, one on each opposite end. So our level is coming along. Now it's time to talk about sprites. Sprites are basically the same thing, but you can't collect them, you bump into them, and you can set them down. For this one, we're going to get rid of our computer that goes with the floppy disk, and instead we're going to do something that goes a little bit more along the lines of hats. We're going to do a coat rack which I think is pretty clever. So after you collect all the hats, what's gonna happen? You're gonna go back to the coat rack and you're gonna be able to set your hats down for a fun little simple game. It's gonna look like a tree here. I'm really trying to be creative as you can tell. I'm no artist, so bear with me. Now we just want one of these. We're not gonna put any more down. Here's the code. We will get into that later because that does need to be changed for our game to look right. Before we move on, let's rename it from computer to rack by giving it a name, just so we can stay more organized. Now let's move on to the player tab. So here we are with the player, and we can move him around the screen. Just click to where you want him to be. This is where he will be spawned in at the beginning of the game whenever you start up your playdate game, so do keep that in mind. Let's use the animation feature to give him, to make him look more lifelike. So we're just gonna click the plus button two times, and now we are going to make his feet look like they are in the air on each frame. Starting with one leg and doing the next leg. As you can see, he is moving there and he is moving on our screen. FPS stands for frames per second, so that's how many frames you want him to repeat the animation per second. So there we go, it does look like he is walking, just to give our game a little more realism. Speaking of realism, I have never seen a hat store that won't let you leave, and does not have an exit, so let's go ahead and do that now. While that would be a very good business model, this isn't what we want for our game now. That little tile will end the game right away. We don't want that. Maybe we want to add another room to our hat store. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click delete on our exit tile. So now our game won't end right away after picking up that tile. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to create our bonus room. So we're going to click plus. We are going to name our room. And there we go. Now that we have our room, head on over to World. And as you can see, we have the tiles from previous. Click on the fill. And we have just filled our room full of wall. Now, let's start off with some decoration. Let's grab our wood, click the pen so that we can lay more down. And we are going to make it look similar to the last room by clicking and dragging just for a little bit of decor. Now it's time to do some DIY with our floor tiles. We're not gonna make this room very big. We're gonna make it relatively small, kind of like a bonus room. You don't have to go in here, but to finish the game, to get everything, you do. Maybe for some bonus hats, to get some bonus points, just to add a little bit of variety, a little bit of challenge into our game. So this is gonna be our room. We are gonna go over to our items and we are gonna place down, mm, we'll say three, we'll say three bonus hats. We made our player, we made our main room, we made the whole area, we made this room as well. Now we just need a way to leave this room once and for all. 
So let's go over to our exits right over here. And now we hover over, we see this little box. We're gonna click in the middle to give ourselves an exit. Over here, specify where it's connected to. It should be connected to the start. This little button means that the whole top wall will be an exit, a way to leave. So we are going to click start to make it connected to our start. Now we click on rooms, we click start to get back to the main screen, and we are going to add another exit connected to our second room, and click on that little mini map to place where we want our character to drop down to once he enters the screen. So now that we have that, that's all set and good. We are going to move on to the coat rack. So basically, we're going to make it so the coat rack can count the number of hats that you've collected when you go over to it, and I'll walk you through that right now. Click on the script tab, and then on the right side, you will see all of your different things you can script. Click on the rack, and then basically it says if you interact and you have no hats, then you can use the rack if you collect them. And if you collect a couple hats and go back to it, it will say the number of hats that you have. And after you have collected all of the hats, it will say you found all the hats. The end. And that was the Playdate Pulp full tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed something. And I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. Because maybe I'll even play your game in a future video. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss anything about Playdate or Playdate Pulp. My name is Gavin. This is Playdate Central. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.